Good evening, guys. Hey, um, I just want to share something with you that's really been on my heart. Um, and then the Lord kept dealing with me about it. And then through prayer, he solidified it in a dream last night. Um, but it's just time, guys, that we open our doors of the church. It's really open the doors of our heart. And be that oasis of prayer and living waters of the promise. That promise was God's son, Jesus. The GPS, God's promise was his son. God's promise was his salvation. God positioned his son. Just, I mean, let's could go on and on. He's giving us direction, guys. But this is where I'm going. Okay, I know I'm going to catch some flack for it, but I still have to be obedient. Let's start at 5 in the morning, guys. And I know it's not doable for some churches, probably. But don't hide behind that either. It is doable if you want it to be. Open your doors. If you're in a rough neighborhood or a really crime-ridden neighborhood, maybe not. I kind of get that, sort of the same time those are the people that need it but let's start with this guys saw this a post about the Franklin Grammar thing put it on I'm not sensationalizing it it was about a town in Nevada and everybody put a blue light in their porch to support the police guys they're casualties of a war honestly a war against Christianity and just a war against common sense in general, honestly. And we threw them under the bus. So let's start with that. But these are the scriptures that go with that, guys. But open the doors in, in, to, to all, though. But hear what I'm saying before we tune this off. Revelation 7.17 He's going to feed us if we hunger and thirst and wipe away our tears. John 4, the woman at the well. If you drink of these waters, you won't be thirsty. You won't thirst again. That living water, that river of water that comes out of the throne in Revelations. Pure, clean, crystal pure water. Living waters, guys. Purge, cleanse, quench our thirst. He that hungers and thirsts after righteousness shall be filled. It's time, guys. So let's start with that. Open your doors and feed the police. At five in the morning, make them breakfast. Give them a cool cup of water. There's plenty of churches across this land, guys. Let it be an oasis where they can stop and rest because they deal with the trash all day long, guys. Most people, and then the other class that you need to open the door too, too, honestly. The homeless. People can't make it. People, most people aren't going to make it as a cop and as a homeless person. They're just not. Thank God you're not. Because, man, they can't leave their job. It's 24-7. And they, de they, they deal with just some ridiculously stuff. No wonder they got that thin blue line, guys. They don't know, you know, they're kind of, got to kind of circle the wagon a little bit. We want this country back as a nation. Get your church to pray at five in the morning. Let these people in. Let it be an oasis. Let it be a light. Cast aside your doctrinal differences, your egos, your money that you want to try to get out of this, something that you want and be the light of this world and trust in God, Jesus, the Holy Ghost and his word. Be that oasis of prayer. It's in Isaiah, but he turned the desert into streams. That living water, guys. Don't you think we're, America's kind of in a desert right now? I wanna interject this, guys, because this is what the Lord told me to say. 
everybody's barking about stuff that happened 200 years ago. So black people open your church to the white people and white people open your church to the black people and the homeless and the police. Be that oasis. Quit trying to be the world. Quit trying to let the world run and dictate what God has chosen. Make a difference. I challenge you guys, 5 a.m., if we did that as a nation, things will change. Prayer and promise of living water. Come on, guys. I've got a friend that probably might be a plug, maybe not. I, I'm sure when, I, I haven't even talked to him about this yet, but I will. He's already doing it, pretty much. Just in a different, he's just doing it. He's out there on the streets, feeding people. A 12 hour day is nothing for him. It's not even his job, guys, honestly. He's not getting any income out of it, I don't think. He's just doing it. And then he's still trying to preach too, the gospel. When he gets home and all that, it's just, man, it's called um, Noble Life Outreach. It's in Dallas. But we can do this all over the nation, guys. I'm challenging the church, small, large, open your doors, guys, at 5 a.m. and be an oasis to the police, to the homeless, to anyone that comes. Yeah, you might have to hire the police, honestly, to keep to keep the peace at five in the morning. I get that. Do what it takes. Make them breakfast. Give them a cold cup of water, glass of water, bottles of water, whatever their favorite drink is. Prayer. Pray for them. Let them come in and get prayer. Let's do this, guys. I'm going to go back in history because everybody seems to be barking about this right now. Appomattox. Look it up, guys. You fact checkers or whatever. Just look it up. I get this stuff in prayer, guys. I don't make this stuff up. It just... <laughs> the Lord shows me things like he's going to show you too. It's just I, he shows me things not necessarily different, but just how he deals with me is different. But not necessarily. He may deal with you differently, too. And it's all directional. From the Lord. Appomattox. General Grant. Taking the surrender from General Lee. Just defeated the enemy, guys. And look at my posting on this, guys, okay? It was a murderous, heinous regime. No better than Hitler's. It was the slavery was okay I get all that guys I'm not gonna sit real well where I'm at here in Dallas it's not a good part of our history it's a dark 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 blood-stained ugly piece of history in America sorry it is but that doesn't mean we should you pick up that demonic force because that's what it is whether you're black and white whether you're black or whether you're white or white or whether you're black whichever it's a demonic force and it's out to steal kill and destroy so that's what i'm saying let's open our houses to prayer at five in the morning be that oasis but this is what general grant did guys just generally just surrendered just defeated the enemy very vicious brutal war lots of people lost their lives guys tore the country up took it just it was a mess still is a mess some of it unfortunately as he went by general lee general grant the victorious general saluted the defeated general and his men, he saluted it, the general and his men, not because he respected what they stood for or any of that, because he didn't. But his, his guys, his troops looked at him and said, you know, kind of, what are you doing, dude? I'm paraphrasing it, but 
Look it up. It's all in the history. What are you doing? And he said, I'm doing this so that the healing can begin. That's what I'm saying, guys. You want this nation back? Don't wait till... Man, honestly, guys, this next election is going to be a mockery of democracy, honestly. Mail-in votes and stuff. How long do we have before that happens? Do you think they're going to be able to figure something out? We've spent years, and they, it's on the news. Look what happened in Florida with uh, Al Gore. and You know, and we spent years cleaning up the systems, putting things in place. you think they're going to do it in a couple months? Everybody's already talking about how, you know, it's not going to work, post office and blah, 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 da, da, da. He can come up with a million reasons why it's not going to work. I'm sorry to say, I hate to say this too, it's true, vote does not, already doesn't count, but your prayer does. I can back it up with scriptures, plenty of them, but here's one, Malachi 3.16. He hears our prayers, he has a book of remembrance, and he writes them down. God that created heaven and earth, guess what guys, he hears my prayers, your prayers, I, I don't even have a church. I'm not like, I don't even want to be, I'm never going to, I'm never going to try to attain to be famous anyhow. I'm just going to be obedient. And you need to be too. So whoever you are, wherever you're at, I don't care if you're in the doghouse, outhouse, or the penthouse. You're a child of the king if you call and choose you. If my people are called by my name, if we want to be called by his name, open your house of prayer. Open the doors. Coronavirus or not. You start with the police and the homeless. Because right now, nobody wants either one of them around. Just kicked the side of the curb. Where do you think all this non-essential garbage came from? The devil himself. Who made that up? Why are we going to wait for some stupid man-made election? Why? When the power is in the prayer, not in the vote. Sorry, burst a lot of bubbles. Better, you better get this right, guys. So I'm challenging you as a nation, as a church, as the body of Christ. If you just have a home group church or whatever, open your doors at 5 in the morning and broadcast it. And let any police officer that wants to stop by and get, get something cold to drink or something to eat or just take a break. From the physical, mental exhaustion that they're under. And then us as a nation threw them under the bus. Guys, we need to really repent of that. And the homeless people too. I get it. The homeless people, you know, most people aren't going to want to let them in their house. Because, you know, a lot of them are going to steal and they're on drugs and stuff like that. I get all that, okay guys? I'm not saying don't, don't be wise. If you're a church, trust in God. First, Jesus, the Holy Ghost, and His Word. How are we going to set these people free if we don't let them in? I'm challenging you guys. Get out of your cave. God challenged mighty men of God all over the place. Look at Elijah hiding in the cave. Jezebel's trying to kill him. He went off and found him a dark, deep cave to hide in. I don't know if it was deep, but dark. Hiding out. Sound familiar? Today, we're hiding out behind a mask, behind the coronavirus, behind everybody, behind all this garbage. Media, politicians, crazy people. We're letting a handful of people destroy this nation. Because they're after the Christianity of it after God's people. The biggest issue, guys, honestly, is that we're, we're murdering our unborn. The abortion issue is big, guys. 
the blood's on our hands. I got this in prayer one day, guys. Not too long ago. I, I got a post out too about how God sees abortion in America. Look it up. The Lord spoke to me, he said, are you your brother's keeper? I was like, okay. Story of, of Cain and Abel. You know what the Lord told me? He said, yes, we are. We've lost an entire generation, guys. He told me that too, and it never correlated. It did, but it didn't. I was thinking because we've lost all these young people. The whole, I mean, let them just look at the technology. Everybody's got their face. Facebook, you can't even, it's a mess. People can't spend two minutes with you without being not picking up their phone or being distracted by a billboard or sign or the YouTube or the just stuff. That's why that 5 a.m., guys, it's quiet, pretty much. No distractions. Open your doors. Do it 24-7, honestly. This isn't a plug for anybody. There's a reason why. I post a lot of stuff from Franklin Graham. Guys, that's one of my messages about the sensationalism. The church has tried to sensationalize everything. Guys, if anybody could, he could milk that cow for all it's worth. Look at his, who his dad was, but he doesn't. He just preaches the gospel to the best of his ability. Availability, really. Perfect? No. Am I? No. Neither are you. None of us are. <clears throat> That's what I'm saying. Don't sensationalize this. Don't make it into something. Don't, you don't hold a big banner up. Go down to your local precinct and tell them what you're doing. Invite them in. Go down to your homeless shelter try to feed them or think of ways to do it. Man, these guys, the, the homeless got kicked around really bad. You think we got locked up? And if you're not in Dallas, fly down to Dallas. Or if you're in Dallas, come down and spend a couple hours with my friend Aaron Buttrick on the streets. You'll repent. Your heart will be broken. You probably won't even last the whole day, honestly, guys. Hot. It's brutal. Do the same with the police, guys. They deal with thugs and drugs and crazy stuff all day long. And then we expect them to smile and be nice to us when, when we're speeding and they give us a ticket. And try to talk our way out of it. Or whatever. Come on, guys. But we could start there. We could start in the house, too. Because when you start gathering together your people in prayer, things are going to change. Attitudes, mindsets. Break down those barriers a little bit, guys. We want this nation back. This is a call to action, not words. Guys, the reason why I can say this with a little bit of authority, guys, honestly. I Me, mean, long story. I don't know that I'm going to share the whole thing with you. But I sat in an all-black all church for over six years. God is the only white thing in the church with the, me and the walls. I was glad to be saved. But one of the things the pastor used to say was an awesome pastor, Nathaniel Dorsey. He used to say, you mealy mouth preachers, and you got a $600 briefcase and a $1 message. You need to go out and get a building, find a barn somewhere, go out and cry out to God till snot and blood comes out. And get a hold of them. Man, he was a serious preacher, guys. That's what we need. Let's take these streets back. Let's take this country back. Let's not let all these, yes, demonic, some of them, politicians and people in high places. You can read between the lines, come up with all these conspiracy theories, and some of them even stick. Some of them don't. Spend all the time on Facebook and all this other garbage and get sucked into that realm. Or you can get on your knees and pray and ask God for direction and spread life, not death. 
those living waters, that promise of living waters. God's son, proclaim the gospel. Open your doors. Quit hiding out, church. I said this, and a lot of people got really good Christians, and some of them, I mean, I ruffled some feathers. I wasn't trying to ruffle feathers. That's not, that wasn't my message. I was just being obedient to God. When I said this, that one virus took out the church, but I didn't mean it took out. It just, we have to all repent of this, guys. But look around, 90, 95% of it just caved in, capitulated. A few stood, very few. It, 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 we can't sensationalize this anymore, guys. We all barked about how much power we had. Did we? We do. We just aren't using it. Because there was a disconnect to true holiness and righteousness and the blood of the Lamb. I'm not throwing us as a, as a Christian, as Christians under the bus, guys. I'm saying repent. That's what grace is all about. Man, God, it's me. It's me, oh Lord, standing in either prayer. I say that I'm not pointing the finger and saying, you guys got to live like this, but I already do. I'm not saying that, guys. I have to repent too. Things I'm cleaning up too. Messes I've got to reconnect with God on too. This message is for me just as much as for you. It's for the body of Christ. We've been like that, what's that story? Ichabod Crane or whatever, the headless horseman guy just running willy-nilly and silly. Brother Dorsey used to say this too. You know, it's not the Holy Ghost, it's the Holy Ghost. Quit playing church, guys. Open your doors at five in the morning and feed the sheep. Start with the police and the homeless. And anybody else that comes in and watch God move, sending people. There's some things he told me to do, and I'll share them with you one day, but he's been sending people. I know he has. Very, very specific, targeted, strategic. Open your doors of your heart. Love you guys. Let's be that oasis of prayer and promise. God's promise was his son. That living water. Let's feed his sheep. Give him water. Living water. Love you guys. Talk to you soon.